Welcome to the next episode in the Understanding Crypto series. Today I'm going to continue working with Ethereum smart contracts and I'm actually going to work with a sample exercise that the Consensus Academy put on GitHub. Uh, it's open source under the MIT license. Um, it's called Simple Bank Exercise and you can find it at github.com slash consensus academy slash simple bank exercise. Um, and in particular, we're going to take a look at the, con the smart contract which is in the contracts folder uh, and it's called simplebank.solidity. Uh, so um, what we're gonna do is um, basically this is a contract where they filled out parts of what they want done to make the contract work. And then they added comments where you're gonna fill in the remainder of the contract. So let's go take a look at how we might do this. Um, so we're gonna be using the Remix IDE under Ethereum. Um, this particular exercise that supports uh, the latest version that's running uh, uh, in Solidity. Um, obviously, if, if you're watching this video and the latest version has been advanced beyond what this code uh, contains, you can move your compiler version back to match the code version. All right, so let's, uh, we'll read through the contract here in, uh, in the Remix, as opposed to reading it over on the GitHub site, just because Remix has all the color coding, uh, make it a little easier to read. Um, so first off, we've got our Pragma Solidity statement saying what version of Solidity we're using for our code. Um, you got your little open source license information up here. Then we've got contract simple bank. Remember contract is really just the same as like a class in C or C++ or Java or a similar type language. Uh, so it's basically describing the, the object template we're, we're creating here. Um, so simple, we're creating a simple bank. Um, we're going and we've got some comments. Um, and then you'll notice for these things, uh, we're gonna have some, we're gonna need to fill in some comments uh, identifying what we're gonna to need to change. For example, here we have a mapping, but there's no visibility uh, shown there. And we got a little hint that we're supposed to protect our user's balance from other contracts. Um, so we're gonna to have to put a visibility keyword in here. Uh, similarly, on the next line, we've got another one with the same hint, fill in a visibility keyword. We want to create a getter function, allow contracts to be able to see if a user is enrolled. So there is a specific visibility keyword that we can put here that should create that getter function and allow other contracts to be able to see if a user is enrolled in this particular mapping. Uh, the next one is let's make sure everyone who knows the knows who owns the bank. So fill in the appropriate visibility keyword. So we're gonna have for our address owner, we're gonna make this message sender readable to everybody. So it's gotta be a keyword uh, that makes the visibility to everyone. Um, and so this might be two or three different keywords between these three different items. All right, uh, next up, we've got three events. We've got an event for log enrolled, a log deposit made and log withdrawal. And we're going to add some arguments for these events. So for log enrolled, we'll be putting an argument here inside the parentheses, uh, which will be an address. For log deposit made, we're going to add two uh, arguments, one for an address and one for an amount. And then our log withdrawal will have three arguments, an account address, a withdrawal amount, and a new balance. Um, scrolling down here, we're going to have our, some functions. First function is going to be a fallback function. Um, that'll be called if some invalid data is sent. Um, then we're going to have a, a get balance function. Um, and we're going to have to um, provide a, a keyword up here that will prevent the function from editing state variables and allow the function to run locally off the blockchain. Um, and right now, so, so there'll be some special keyword we're gonna put in here, uh, in addition to having public there. And then we're gonna have to uh, explain what the function does. We'll get the balance of the sender of the transaction, and that's gonna be what, what's returned. Um, so we're gonna implement the body of it, as well as provide this keyword, uh, preventing the function from editing state variables. Um, then we've got our next function was called enrolled. I'm sorry, enroll. And uh, we're gonna have a return of the user's enroll status, true or false. Uh, and we're also gonna have to emit an event, one of these three events back up here, basically the log enrolled event. Um, so that's what that uh, enroll is gonna do. Uh, basically enroll someone, emit the event, and then return true if everything worked or false if something failed. Um, then we've got uh, 
public uh, deposit. So we're going to return uh, the balance to the user after the deposit's made. Um, so we add, add an appropriate keyword so this function can receive ether, you know, we'll put payable up here. Uh, then we'll have users should be enrolled before they can make deposits. So we'll have a little check to verify that they've already previously been enrolled up there. Um, then we'll add the amount to the user's balance. Um, and we can do something using message to determine the amount that was passed in. Um, then we'll um, emit the appropriate event. Hey, hey, a deposit has happened. So we can do this log deposit made. Um, and then we return the balance to the center of the transaction. Um, then the next part is we're going to withdraw the ether using our withdrawal function. This won't re return any excess ether sent to it. Um, the withdrawal amount uh, you want to withdraw, that's this thing coming in and return the balance remaining for the user. So there is gonna be a return type, which is whatever balance you have left. So if you withdrew $400 and you got $200 balance left, you will return a $200 balance over here. Uh, so if the center's balance is at least the amount they wanna withdraw, subtract the amount from the center's balance and try to send in that amount of ETH to uh, return the user's balance. It's gonna use a require expression to guard and ensure center has enough funds. So basically over requires message saying, hey, is your current balance greater than or equal to the withdrawal amount? Then we're gonna transfer ETH to the sender and decrement the withdrawal amount for the sender's balance. And then we've got to emit the appropriate event, uh, which is this uh, log withdrawal event. And that's it. That's gonna be our simple bank uh, that solidity exercise, uh, going in and making these changes. Um, so that's going to be what we're going to do next. So um, thanks again for watching this part one. Uh, basically, we're going to do this as uh, three episodes. Part one is just kind of walking out what we're describing what we're doing. Uh, part two, we're actually going to write the smart contract code. And then part three, we're going to go back to our simple bank exercise here. And we're actually going to start using the testing code that they created to go along with this exercise. So in addition to having the simple bank solidity contract, um, if we go back to the exercise, they also have this test JavaScript simple bank test, uh, which is a truffle test file that will interact with your contract and verify if you did everything correctly or not. Um, so we're going to do this in three, uh, three phases. Uh, this first phase, I'm just kind of laying out how we're going to be doing everything. Um, second phase, we'll write the contract, which really just requires emic, remix and, you know, um, and a cut and paste or GitHub import or however you want to do it of using the, uh, the contract in uh, Remix and, and write it out. And then the third phase, once we've, uh, we're going to actually use the Truffle to do the testing um, using the Simple Bank test JavaScript file. Uh, if we go take a look at that Simple Bank uh, test JavaScript file, which is over here under test, uh, Simple Bank test JavaScript, we can see the sort of questions they're doing here in JavaScript. Uh, for example, uh, one thing they're gonna do is have an assertion equal, and they'll check to see what's going on. Um, they'll check to say, hey, our address is being marked as enrolled. Um, if they uh, check a balance, you know, they're checking to see if the owner is correct. They're checking to see if the balances are correct. Um, they're checking to make sure that only the enrolled users are marked as enrolled. They're checking, you know, are the deposits correct? Um, you know, are we actually logging deposit events when the deposits are made? Um, are we logging, you know, all the various events? Um, is the balance correct after a withdrawal? Checking the various withdrawals. Um, can you withdraw more than was what was deposited? Uh, are the events being uh, emitted at when you're doing withdrawals? Um, you know, it's basically all the different things it's looking at. Um, and so we'll take a look at how that works uh, using Truffle um in our third episode of this short little series looking at the uh, simple bank exercise uh, for solidity that consensus academy came up with um and again this is all open source software so um want to thank consensus academy for making it public and making it open source so that everybody on the internet can learn how to, how to program in solidity uh, and create smart contracts that uh, will pass tests using the truffle suite 
So tune in next time when we do another video uh, on the Understanding Crypto series, diving in deeper into smart contract programming with Solidity for the Ethereum platform.